Good morning. Today, I work as a nurse. You're dirty, Luna. Hi, everybody. Mommy's home. Mommy's home. Nortron. Hi, Lenny. Mommy's home. And good morning again. Today I'm going to be a carpenter. Mm. Let me clarify that. <laughs> Don't get carried away. Uh, I'm going to be working with a carpenter uh, at his place and uh, trying to be a carpenter for a day. So today I'm actually going to go up to help my friend Bruce. Bruce has been in a few videos, been helping a few times with some things over the last few years. He helped get the sliding glass door down to the cliff cabin, and he helped me install the wood stove in that cabin as well. So we kind of do tradesies. I met Bruce back in 2015 or 2016, and he is developing his property, doing, there's outbuildings and a workshop build and a house and some cabins. So back in 2015, he was kind of at the beginning, and sta beginning stages of all of that. And I met him and I saw that he had a sawmill and I was like, I want a sawmill. So I was pretty, pretty green at any kind of carpentry or anything. So I volunteered with Bruce for a few weeks just to kind of get my toes wet. I don't know, apparently he said I was like kind of a good worker or something. And he was like, you should come and work for me. I'll pay you. And I'm like, yeah, but I have like my own cabins I gotta build. I've always said, well, I'll come and give you a hand one day. Um, I just haven't really been able to come up with the time for some reason to get up and help Bruce. So today is the day that I'm gonna do that. So right now Bruce is building cabins and it sounds like he's kind of at this phase of doing things in the workshop. It should be a fun day, it's nice and sunny. And actually helping us today with that is a power station that I've got from Blue Eddy. So thank you to Blue Eddy for sponsoring today's video. I've just got this loaded up into my truck before I head up to Bruce's. So one of the concerns for us power station users about power stations is exposing them to the elements. This is the world's first IP65 rated outdoor portable power station. It's the Blue Eddy AC240 with the expandable B210 battery. So it's the perfect power station for all outdoor activities from camping in the snow, in the rain, in the mud, in the sand, to boating, to RVing, to just off-roading, or in the workshop, any outdoor activity or any dirty activity. This is the power station for you. It is dust tight, dust proof and it is water resistant from all angles so splashes at any angle for rving and boating it's your all-in-one rv boat power supply with its nema tt30 port which gives you direct ac power supply the ac240 packs 2400 watts of ac output and 3600 watts when using the power lifting mode its power capacity is 1536 watt hours it's an incredibly fast charging unit, getting up to 80% in 45 minutes and fully charged in 70 minutes. It allows 1200 watts maximum solar input, getting you fully charged in two hours. Solar, AC, lead acid battery, car, and AC solar combined are the five ways it can be charged. Like many of Blue Eddy's products, this unit is customizable and expandable. 
Connecting two AC240 units ran in parallel doubles your output at 4800 watts, which meets 99% of indoor load requirements. Your voltage remains constant, but your power doubles. One AC240 can be connected to a maximum of four B210s, giving you 10,136 watt hours, and that can be expanded again with two AC240 units and up to eight B210 batteries, giving you a total capacity of 20,272 watt hours. Woo! One thing I don't often mention are the safety ratings. It is equipped with a battery management system which protects against overcharging, over discharging, over current and over temperature. It also provides diagnostic and reporting capabilities, has a grounding design and comes with a six year customer service support. If you've ever been concerned about a power station out in the elements, grab yourself the world's first IP65 rated outdoor portable power station. The only one that can stave off those outdoor intrusions. Special thanks to Blue Eddy. Check out the link in my description to grab the best early bird price, a deal you won't want to miss out on. So Bruce has never used a power station before. So he's a carpenter doing lots of things on and off the grid. So what'd you think? It's pretty useful to be able to just park anywhere and pull out your tools and do something. Yeah, use all your tools. Yeah. Uh, for me, if I could go work in my forest and not have to run 200 feet of extension cords, that would be pretty handy. We aren't able to use his workshop today, so we are gonna be setting up outside and he's building a shelf of some sort for one of his little cabins. So that's what we're gonna do today. Bruce rents his workshop out, so it's rented, which is why we can't use it. I didn't know that and he kind of didn't know that it was a last minute thing, so we'll make do outside. Okay, I'm in one of Bruce's little cabins that he built and it's pretty stinking cute. Little kitchen, it's like the 20, 24 by 20 or something like that. Just a little bachelor thing, bed. Doesn't come with a bike. <laughs> anyway, what's to build is a kind of a closet for the corner. I even got carried away and put on my steel toed work boots. He used to have the HM 126, like an older, I think it's like 2013. And now he has the HM 130, new souped up one. So this is all lumber from his property came off his sawmill. I'm gonna start with taking the live edge off. Bruce is kind of dealing with some business issues today, so I feel a little bit bad. Today doesn't seem to be a very good day to be here. But we're here. get really funny about like um, doing things for other people like I lose my confidence I feel like I don't know I just feel like I'm gonna like make a mistake or I don't know I just like don't feel like I can be in the lead when it's someone else's thing I mean I guess that's normal but Wow, it is so sunny. <laughs> I'm roasting. Oh, got my little arrow. This Bruce's little dog arrow who I've looked after lots before for those of you that have been watching for a while. I'll be looking after him again here in a while. Just me and my arrow. Do -do 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 -do.
So this guy is splitting at the end, splitting as we speak. So we're going to surgically repair it. Locked back into place. Yeah. This one's kind of got a couple splits all the way through. There's a little surgery. Bush. It's a oh. South African one. Oh. All right, I just got home. So unfortunately today was probably the worst day we could have booked. Like I said, he rents his workshop out. So his workshop is rented out for the next eight days. That was a surprise. And then uh, he got a bunch of bad news as like a business thing. So he's a little bit preoccupied with trying to sort that out. So I came home and that's fine. I wouldn't mind to help him again another day if I got time, but because I didn't really feel like I was actually that much help. That I guess means that I can work on something of my own. And so one of the things that we recently had done was the dog door installed in one of the walls, which was hard for Steve to, <laughs> to accept, but we kind of need it. We're in the phase of trying to train them that there is a dog door there because they still want to go to the main door. And we built a little ramp, but the thing needs to be flat and not sloped. So I'm going to try and maybe fix that today and create um, like a bit more of a deck with a step or two down, make it a little bit more ergonomically friendly for the old farts. I'd like to do something more permanent and better down the road, but I want to wait till all the snow is gone and that area is dry because it can also be kind of muddy. Oh, you don't ever want to complain about the sun because we don't see a ton of it. But I was in the sun all day and yeah, it's nice to be in the shade a little bit right now. So this is the ramp. So there's the dog door. We're on the ugly side of the house. So this is the office room that the, um, the huck and chuck room, if you will, the room that gets neglected the most in the house and it's embarrassingly, disgustingly dirty and putting the dog door in there was really the best option because <coughs> Lenny, no, <laughs> mom is trying to film because of a metal roof. Now there is a lot of slides and <coughs> the way the roof is here, that the snow doesn't shed here so this seemed to be the safest place to put it and I would like to kind of redo the room and make it a lot more dog friendly maybe some an extra couch or something in there anyway everything is a work in progress <laughs> this is the ramp Clyde definitely has a really hard time with it so I either of just looking at it I think I might try and reduce it <laughs> Make it not so angled if I can get away with that because it's kind of screwed in. If I can get away with that and then add another level out here because Clyde doesn't like this, the slope of this ramp. So let's do it. Oh, darn.
mention we're leaving again. We're leaving the country again in a few days. By the time you guys see this video, we'll already be gone. Don't worry, we have someone staying at our house. <laughs> but it always gets so hectic trying to get things done before you leave. There's no dog poo. not like it's pretty and uh, perfect I mean the ground is like super wet so it's gonna sink anyway but like I said this is just temporary kind of just for when we're gone trying to train the dogs on the darn thing so it's better than what it was Watching this footage back is a little bit hard on my heart. Maybe it is for some of you too who have 
been watching Clyde for a few years, you can see that he's really struggling with his back end. And this has been going on for a couple months, slowly just kind of declining that way and his vision is declining. Dang, don't we just wish our pets could live forever? All right, one more thing. I may as well, I wasn't sure where I would divulge this as if it's like some big kind of um, <clears throat> amazing thing. And it's not really, but I think it's pretty neat. So if some of you remember when I was trying to make the drawer front for my stupid dog food cabinet, I went to my friend's house and got some salvaged plywood. I was like outside of his house for probably years and it was just gonna be sent to the dump or something. And I was going to use that. I painted one side black, but it was actually quite warped. So luckily it wouldn't work because I actually was looking at the painted side and I kind of looked at that and I saw goad. I was happy to set that aside. I found another scrap piece of plywood from my friend and used that for the drawer instead, a thicker straight board. So that was that. So anyway, what I ended up doing was taking all of that and I ripped it on the table saw into two inch strips and then I cut those on the like miter saw to six inches so I created little tiles. And these little tiles I'm going to use to make my kitchen backsplash with in the cabin. And I guess a herringbone pattern was kind of the idea. I, I guess I could play around, but herringbone was kind of what I was gonna do. And I kind of did a little demo of that last night. Now, where I'm at now is that <clears throat> I have this whole bucket full of these little tiles. And <clears throat> I wondered, I actually was hoping to, I actually was hoping to do this at Bruce's in his workshop to use uh, some, a belt sander, some sort of sander that's stationary to sand and round the edges just a little bit. I had done a few of them with the palm sander and let's see if I can find one that has it. Yeah, so here's one that has slightly sanded edges like barely i just have to decide if it's worth doing this whole bucket full with a palm sander i wish i had a well actually i have a we have a belt sander here i wonder if i could set it up so that it's stationary and then i can just you know put the pieces on like that i do think it would i do think that it would make it look more like a traditional tile because tiles typically have a bit of a roundedness to their edges i'll try this I have a lot to do. <laughs> finished it took me about an hour and I did the little there was little end off cuts from the strips so I thought I would do those too just in case I need them all I'm not sure what this is gonna cover but what do you think would you guys do the herringbone I personally like that. I personally like it because it's a bit of a different, like the wood planks are all horizontal and I thought like if you do subway tiles, those are horizontal. It'd be nice to have a bit of a different um, look. I guess I could do some funky vertical tiles, but I don't know. I'm kind of digging the herringbone.
That also looks cool. Anyway, I guess that's it. That is it, I think. That'll be it for this video. And, oh, you know what I was thinking? The whole time I was out there cutting this plywood, sanding it, I was like, hopefully it doesn't have a lead in it. That didn't change me putting a mask on, but 